In this video, we're going to talk about setting up a do-it-yourself CO2 system. Does it work? And the pros and cons. Stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Chung from The Wild Box, and welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel and you want more awesome, cool aquarium videos, please hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. Right off the bat, I gotta say that do-it-yourself CO2 works. It's not as good as pressurized CO2 system, but it does its job. And because of that reason, it's also nearly impossible to gas your fish. The price point is cheaper than getting what I consider the next step up, a pressurized CO2 system with a paintball tank setup. We'll do a price comparison in a bit. DIY CO2 will last you about a week to three weeks depending on how much you use it before you have to mix another batch. The process of actually mixing a new batch is easy but it's annoying to some because you have to do it so often. Now the concept is simple, you're going to set up a contraption where you're going to mix two chemicals together and it'll produce CO2 which gets pushed into your tank. Now I use it successfully in 20 gallons or smaller tanks but I heard that people have no problem doing it with tanks up to 55 gallons. Now people have doubled up the system in bigger tanks. Now I'm not sure if that works, but it'd be something to try in the future. Now let's talk about what you need. Everything that I talk about here has links at the bottom in the video description below. First you need the contraption to actually generate the CO2. There's two types that I found here. Now this contraption you see here costs $16. Now there's another contraption here that makes setting up easier as well as make your sub look good, but the problem here is about $31, double the price of the first contraption. Now we'll just go with the first generator that we talked about here. Now you go old school and build your own using the bottle cap, silicone, tubing, and all that. But with the price of this, it's not much cheaper if you did it that way. And it's just much more convenient. However, if you're a hardcore do-it-yourselfer, then by all means. You could rig one up without the gauge and you could just replace the needle valve with one of those shutoff valves just so you could shut off the CO2 during the night. Now, word of advice, if you do, get these caps. It's already pre-made for you and you don't have to play the game of hit or miss with silicon and tubing and possibly have a leak. To create the reaction to produce CO2, you need two things, baking soda and citrus acid. Now, there are other recipes out there that uses sugar and yeast, but this seems to work much better for me. I bought a bag of 13 and a half pounds of baking soda for $19 and I bought a bag of citrus acid for $14 on Amazon. But if you shop around, you might be able to find it cheaper. You could also find this stuff at your local grocery store. Just make sure it's food grade stuff. Now I chose to buy large bags of this stuff so it lasts me longer without needing to keep buying it. Now you can go smaller or you could buy it in bulk. It's totally up to you. Now you need two empty two liter bottles. Now these are free if you drink soda. Now if you don't, you could always ask a friend. Now if you don't have friends, go to the 99 cent store and get two bottles of soda, feed them to your dog and rinse them out. No, 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 don't, don't feed them to your dog. And finally, you need your basic accessories, bubble counter, hose, diffuser, a one wave air valve. And I also added another cool tool which made my life easier. I'll talk about that in a bit. Now let's unpack this contraption. As you can see, one of the caps houses a gauge as well as the other cap houses a square looking thing. That is your needle valve. Now this model comes with a ball on the inlet and I'll show you what that does later. But some of the older models in these contraptions don't have this. The caps are most likely labeled A and B. This is so you could easily identify which bottle goes where. A is where your citrus acid bottle goes and B is where your baking soda bottle goes. So just remember this, A is for acid, B is for baking soda. And C is for Chung, the guy you're watching now on the water box. Now you also want to make it easy by labeling your bottle A and B so that you know what goes where. Now the recipe is simple. For bottle A, you want 200 grams of citric acid and you're going to mix it with 600 milligrams of water. Mix it in the bottle and shake it up really well. Now for bottle B, you're going to mix 200 grams of baking soda and 200 milliliters of water. Again, give it a good shake. Now attach the bottles to the appropriate caps, A to A, B to B. Now make sure that's screwed on nice and snug and at this point also make sure that your needle valve is closed shut. Make sure the hose with the ball is inside the acid citron mix. That's what the magnet's for. If the model you got doesn't have that ball, then just make sure that the hose is inside the mix of the citric acid. When ready, we'll prime the generator by squeezing bottle A. This will move the citric acid into bottle B and start the reaction. I keep squeezing bottle A and getting the citric acid in there until it builds enough pressure so that it makes the bottle rock solid. Then I move the ball outside the citric acid mix. This will create the pressure that I need much quicker. 
Now, if you don't have that ball, it's okay. It'll just take a little longer. It'll take about 20 minutes. But if you have that ball, maybe about 10 minutes. You know when you're ready to pump CO2 in the tank when the needle on the gauge hits that green area. If you have the model with the magnetic ball, go ahead and move it back into citrate acid mix and you're good to go for another week or two before you have to mix up another batch. Now I mentioned I use another tool to make my life easier. During the night, you want to shut off the CO2 by turning off the needle valve. Well, I cheated. I bought a solenoid with CO2 hose threading and put it on the timer. Now this worked great and it only cost me about $17 and it's worth it just for the convenience. Now this is how I have it set up. I have a hose going from the needle valve to the solenoid and a hose from the solenoid to the one-way air valve and then a hose from the bubble counter and from the bubble counter into the diffuser in the tank. Now once I set the needle valve to the setting that I want, I just let it be until I need to change out the mix again. Now is it any cheaper against, let's say, a pressurized system using a paintball tank? Let's take a look. Now mind you, the prices might be different for you where you're at, and I'm also just rounding up. Now I'm going to leave out the pricing for the basic accessories for now, and we'll just stick to the basic core components. Now here's a list of the costs with the CO2 setup without the solenoid. Now let's list the cost of doing up a pressurized CO2 system with a paintball tank. Now I'm not going to list the cost of the baking soda or the citric acid or the refill of CO2 on the paintball tank. We'll get to that later. Now this cost reflects a poor man's setup for a pressurized CO2 system for a paintball tank. This is using the CO2 Omnibus Regulator. Now we can find one for $26 on eBay from China. It costs a lot more on Amazon, but we're trying to get the best deal here, right? It doesn't have a built-in solenoid, so it's leveling the playing field. Now, I got one a while ago, and it's kind of dodgy. If you get it to work, I think it's worth the cost, but from reading reviews, even some people had problems with it. So, buy at your own risk. Now, let's go and add the price of the solenoid itself. Again, an optional component. Now, let's play around with this a little bit. Let's go find a CO2 regulator that comes from China that already has a built-in solenoid. Now let's talk about the cost of getting the mix for the do-it-yourself CO2 as well as CO2 paintball tank refills. Now it costs me about $5 to refill this 24 ounce paintball tank and it lasts me roughly about say 3 months. Now for the DIY mix, let's take the lowest common denominator and base it on the cistern acid 5 pound bag. This contains 2,270 grams so that's about 11 times I could do a mix on. Let's say I'm mixing a batch every 2 weeks so that's 5.5 months worth of cistern acid for $14. Now if we base it on the three month period, that's about roughly $6 I'm just spending on citric acid. This is not including the price of the baking soda. Again, this is a very rough estimate. You kids at home, don't base your math tutelage on me. Cost wise, it's much cheaper in the beginning, but in the way, way long run, the cost is gonna catch up. I would say that it is a great way to get your hands wet with CO2 for small to mid-sized tank. Ha, huh, did you see what I just did there? And it's a great way to get familiar with using CO2 before you decide to go pressurized. But cost isn't the only thing. There's a couple of cons about using DIY CO2. First is that you must change out the batch every two weeks as opposed to going to the paintball store and getting a tank refilled every three months. Heck, I bought two extra paintball tanks so I could fill them all at once so that cuts down the need to visit the paintball store. Pressurized CO2 is much more concentrated so you're going to get a lot more out of what's coming out of the pressurized tank than you would out of the DIY CO2 system. In other words, you could use less pressurized CO2 to get the same levels of what you're getting out of a do-it-yourself CO2 system. Basically, do-it-yourself CO2 is like the diet version of pressurized CO2. So I hope this video helps you get into do-it-yourself CO2. My name is Chung, this is The Water Box. If you're new here, remember to subscribe and like this video. I will talk at you guys later.